Level 0 At level 0, volcanoes aren't violent monsters. They're more like glowing fountains. Instead of dramatic explosions, you get effusive lava flows, slow, steady rivers of molten rock oozing down the slopes. Think Hawaii's Kilauea, lava creeping forward at walking speed, sometimes so calm you could roast a marshmallow on it, if you don't mind the sulfur fumes. Scientifically, this is the most basic volcanic activity. No ash clouds, no thunderous booms, just magma releasing gas and heat in a surprisingly gentle way. These eruptions are measured as VEI0 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, meaning they barely register as explosive at all. They can last for days, weeks, or even years, reshaping landscapes one glowing trickle at a time. But don't let the calm fool you. Effusive eruptions may look harmless, yet they can still bury homes, farmland, and even entire towns under unstoppable rivers of rock. Once lava hardens, it doesn't go away. It creates new land, sometimes even expanding coastlines. So level zero is the quiet beginning of volcanic fury. Beautiful to watch, relatively safe from a distance, but a reminder that the earth is alive beneath our feet. And as we climb the scale, things stop looking so peaceful. Level one. At level one, volcanoes start to put on a show. These eruptions aren't cataclysmic. They're more like nature's version of a firework display. Instead of quiet rivers of lava, you get splashy bursts that hurl glowing blobs of molten rock a few dozen meters into the air. Scientists call this Strombolian activity, named after Stromboli in Italy, a volcano so consistent it's been nicknamed the Lighthouse of the Mediterranean. If you were standing at a safe distance, a level 1 eruption would feel dramatic, but not terrifying. You'd hear the low booms, see glowing arcs of lava painting the night sky, and maybe even feel the ground thrum under your feet. For locals near Stromboli, this has been background noise for centuries, a constant reminder that their mountain is alive. Scientifically, level 1 eruptions measure low on the volcanic explosivity index, sending plumes less than a kilometer high. They're frequent, often daily, and usually don't require evacuations. But here's the catch. Gentle doesn't mean harmless. Falling lava bombs can crush rooftops, and sudden bursts can surprise anyone who underestimates them. So while level 1 might seem like Earth showing off with harmless fireworks, it's really a warm-up act. A reminder that beneath the spectacle lies power building towards something bigger. Because once eruptions start reaching higher into the sky, the danger zone expands fast. Level 2 At level 2, the volcano stops being playful and starts flexing real muscle. We've moved past gentle lava fountains into eruptions that can launch ash plumes 1 to 5 kilometers into the sky. These are no longer just background fireworks. They're loud, disruptive, and impossible to ignore. Scientists often call this Vulcanian activity. Instead of a steady trickle of lava, you get sudden bursts like a soda bottle shaken and uncapped, except the soda is superheated magma and gas. Each blast is powerful enough to rattle windows, shower nearby villages in ash, and send glowing chunks of rock flying through the air. One classic example is Galeras Volcano in Colombia, which has had multiple VEI2 eruptions. In 1993, one of its moderate blasts tragically killed several scientists who were studying the crater. A sobering reminder that even at this level, volcanoes demand respect. For locals, level 2 can feel like living under a nervous giant, quiet for weeks or months, then suddenly booming to life with explosions that paint the sky gray. Roads get coated in ash, crops suffer, and communities start wondering if the next eruption will stay moderate or climb higher up the scale. Here's the deceptive part. Level 2 eruptions often don't look apocalyptic. Tourists sometimes treat these eruptions like a thrilling backdrop for selfies or vacation videos, forgetting that behind the dramatic scenery lies very real danger. But hidden inside that dark ash cloud are microscopic shards of volcanic glass, sharp enough to shred lungs if inhaled. So while Level 2 isn't the stuff of disaster movies, it's the first level where eruptions stop being spectacles and start becoming serious hazards. And once volcanoes learn to reach this high, the next step gets much more dangerous. Level 3 At level 3, volcanoes stop being noisy neighbors and start becoming killers. These eruptions can launch ash columns up to 15 kilometers high, powerful enough to punch into the stratosphere. The ash doesn't just sprinkle down like snow, it buries towns, contaminates water supplies, and turns daylight into a choking gray twilight. One tragic example is Nevado del Ruiz in Colombia, 1985. The eruption itself wasn't the largest on record, but it triggered a devastating lahar, a river of mud, ash, and melted ice that swept through valleys and towns below. The city of Armero was engulfed, leaving over 23,000 people dead in a matter of hours. The lesson? At level 3, you don't need a super volcano to destroy a community. 
Even a moderate eruption can be catastrophic when it collides with glaciers, rivers, or populated areas. What makes level 3 eruptions especially dangerous is their unpredictability. They can begin with a series of booming explosions that throw volcanic bombs the size of cars, followed by ash falls heavy enough to collapse rooftops. Crops fail under the weight of ash, airports shut down, and survivors often find themselves cut off from help. And here's the frightening part. Eruption columns this high can disrupt weather. Ash and gases released at this stage begin to affect not just local skies, but the climate of entire regions. So level 3 is a turning point, and it's no longer just about surviving falling rock. It's about surviving the chain reactions volcanoes unleash. And once we step beyond level 3, the stage is set for eruptions that don't just ruin towns. They disrupt nations. Level 4. At level 4, eruptions stop being just local tragedies and start interfering with the lives of people who may live thousands of kilometers away. These eruptions blast ash columns 10 to 20 kilometers high, powerful enough to drift across borders and continents. The destruction isn't just on the slopes of the volcano, it's in the skies above us. A modern reminder came in 2010 when Iceland's Eyjafjallajökull erupted. The name alone was enough to terrify news anchors. But the eruption did something far worse. It filled European skies with microscopic shards of volcanic glass. Those particles are deadly for aircraft engines. And within days, over 100,000 flights were grounded. Millions of passengers were stranded. The world's biggest airlines lost billions of dollars. Not because of fire or lava, but because of an invisible ash cloud. This is the hidden power of level 4. You don't need buildings collapsing or lava rushing through towns for an eruption to paralyze nations. Ash can suffocate crops, poison livestock, and contaminate drinking water. On a clear day, you might never see the ash, but breathe it in, and your lungs know the difference. Level 4 eruptions prove that volcanoes aren't just geological curiosities, they're global disruptors. They remind us that the Earth doesn't need to wipe out cities to remind us who's in charge. A single ash plume can ripple through economies, industries, and food supplies in ways no one saw coming. And if level 4 can halt flights and stall economies, the next level cranks the violence even higher. Because level 5 is when mountains don't just cough, they explode. Level 5. At level 5, a volcano doesn't just erupt, it detonates. These eruptions unleash over 1 cubic kilometer of material tearing landscapes apart and creating devastation that becomes etched into history. Entire mountainsides can collapse, valleys are reshaped, and the world suddenly realizes how fragile civilization is compared to raw geology. The textbook case, Mount St. 1980. For weeks, the volcano in Washington state bulged ominously, pressure building beneath the surface. Then on May 18th, a magnitude 5.1 earthquake triggered the north face of the mountain to collapse. In an instant, the largest landslide ever recorded in human history thundered downslope. This collapse uncorked the pressurized magma, releasing a lateral blast that flattened forests for nearly 20 miles and hurled ash across the United States. The eruption spewed so much material that the mountain itself lost over 400 meters in height. Entire ecosystems were annihilated, rivers were choked with debris, and daylight turned to darkness hundreds of miles away. More than 50 people were killed many caught by surprise in what was thought to be a manageable eruption. Level 5 eruptions are called paroxysmal, a word that perfectly captures their violence. They're sudden, overwhelming, and impossible to stop. Even decades later, the scar of Mount St. Helens is visible, a reminder that a single mountain can rewrite geography in minutes. At this level, volcanoes no longer just disrupt, they transform. And if level 5 can blow the side off a mountain, imagine what happens when eruptions get even bigger so massive they alter the climate of the entire planet. That's level 6. Level 6. At level 6, eruptions don't just devastate landscapes, they shake the planet. These events eject more than 10 cubic kilometers of material, filling skies with ash, cooling the atmosphere, and altering weather patterns around the globe. The best modern example is Mount Pinatubo, 1991 in the Philippines. For months, the mountain grumbled with earthquakes and steam explosions. Then in June, it unleashed one of the largest eruptions of the 20th century. Columns of ash shot 35 kilometers into the atmosphere, and pyroclastic flows thundered across the land at hurricane speeds, destroying everything in their path. The eruption expelled so much sulfur dioxide that it formed a veil in the stratosphere, reflecting sunlight back into space. The result? A measurable global temperature drop of about 0.5 degrees Celsius for the next two years. It was proof that a single volcano could influence the climate of the entire Earth. Pinatubo killed hundreds directly and displaced more than a million people. But its real legacy was the reminder of how vulnerable our interconnected world is. 
aircraft were grounded, crops failed, and the planet's delicate climate balance was disrupted, all from one mountain's fury. Level 6 eruptions are rare, but when they strike, they're remembered for generations. They leave scars not just on landscapes, but on history itself. And, as terrifying as they are, they still don't represent the peak of volcanic violence. Because beyond colossal eruptions lies a scale so vast, it can change the course of civilizations. That's level 7. Level 7? At level 7, volcanic fury reaches a scale so vast it doesn't just disrupt nations. It reshapes the course of human history. These eruptions hurl more than 100 cubic kilometers of material into the sky, darkening the atmosphere, devastating agriculture, and triggering global crises. The most infamous example is Mount Tambora, 1815, in Indonesia. The eruption was so violent, it blasted the top off the mountain, lowering its height by more than a kilometer. Ash and pumice buried villages, pyroclastic flows swept entire islands clean, and tens of thousands died in the immediate blast. But Tambora's deadliest weapon wasn't lava or ash, it was climate. The eruption spewed vast amounts of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere, creating a volcanic winter. In 1816, the world experienced what became known as the Year Without a Summer. Temperatures plummeted, crops failed across Europe and North America, famine spread, riots broke out over food shortages. Even culture was shaped. Some historians say the gloomy skies of that year inspired Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein. This is the terrifying power of Level 7. It doesn't just destroy landscapes, it destabilizes societies. An eruption in one corner of the globe can ripple outward, collapsing harvests, economies, and empires. Super colossal eruptions remind us that Earth itself has the power to alter history in ways no war or empire ever could. But as civilization reeled from Tambora, one haunting question remains. If a single volcano could freeze summers and starve nations, what happens when the Earth unleashes something even bigger? That's level 8. Level 8? At level 8, we enter the realm of the supervolcano. These eruptions eject more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of material, enough to bury entire countries under meters of ash. They are so rare they occur only once every 50,000 to 100,000 years. But when they do, they rewrite the planet. The last known example was the Toba super eruption in Indonesia about 74,000 years ago. Toba blasted ash across South Asia, smothering landscapes under deposits meters thick. Climate models suggest it may have triggered a volcanic winter that lasted for years, lowering global temperatures and shrinking human populations to a fraction of their size. Some scientists even argue that humanity came close to extinction. Today, when people talk about Level 8, they often think of Yellowstone. Beneath the forests and geysers of Wyoming lies a massive magma chamber capable of producing an eruption on this scale. While geologists assure us Yellowstone isn't about to blow, the thought of such an event is enough to keep it in the headlines and fuel endless speculation. What makes Level 8 terrifying isn't just the destruction of one nation. It's the global collapse. Crops would fail worldwide, supply chains would disintegrate, and billions could face famine. The ash, gases, and soot would choke the skies, plunging the world into a darkness humanity has never experienced. A Level 8 eruption isn't a natural disaster. It's a planetary reset button. But if even supervolcanoes have happened before, what about the unthinkable? That's where Level 9 comes in, the eruption so violent, it exists only in speculation. Level 9. At Level 9, we've moved past history and into speculation. A volcanic eruption so vast it wouldn't just disrupt civilization, it would end it as we know it. This is the hypothetical eruption beyond even Toba or Yellowstone, where the Earth tears itself open on a scale we've never recorded. Imagine a chain reaction of multiple supervolcanoes erupting in succession. Yellowstone in North America, Taupo in New Zealand, and Campi Flegre in Italy, all triggered by shifts in Earth's crust. Billions of tons of ash and sulfur flood the atmosphere, blotting out the sun completely. Global temperatures crash, plunging the planet into an ice-bound volcanic winter lasting decades. Within weeks, crops fail worldwide. Oceans absorb fallout, collapsing marine food chains. Air travel ceases entirely, communication lines fall silent, and governments struggle just to feed their people. The modern world, so dependent on global trade and fragile supply chains, grinds to a halt. Archaeological evidence from the Toba eruption suggests early humans may have nearly vanished after a super eruption. Now scale that up to billions of people. Mass famine, political collapse, and migrations on a scale never seen before could unravel civilization in a single generation. Level 9 isn't just a disaster. It's the volcanic doomsday scenario. Unlike earthquakes or hurricanes, you can't rebuild when the entire biosphere is poisoned 
and the sky itself refuses to clear. At this level, the question stops being, how do we survive the eruption, and becomes, can humanity survive at all? And that chilling possibility leaves us with the haunting thought, maybe the Earth has the power to erase us, without warning and without mercy.